Hi guys, have you ever heard of Dendera Temple? Known as the sixth gnome of Upper Egypt, it is one of the best preserved ancient temple complexes on earth, and it bears the scars of what must have been the most frightening and destructive of events. An event that is ignored by the majority of modern academia. The complex spans some 40,000 square feet, and within the temple is some of the most well-preserved ancient artworks of anywhere in Egypt. Along with preserving the exquisite art and decorations, the temple also preserved evidence of something we were not taught about in history class. Upon the granite steps, which still lead to the temple's roof, in direct alignment with a small window cut into the thick stone wall, is evidence of severe melting. At one time in the temple's long life, the steps within were turned into liquid magma. What catastrophic event could lead to the melting of granite steps through a small window in the wall? Were such events commonplace, or was it the result of an accident? Is this why the ancient structures were built with such huge blocks of stone? Many have speculated that the Dendora Temple is built upon an even older site. Are the steps surviving remnants of this much earlier complex? Were they part of a structure that once witnessed a solar flare, perhaps, or maybe a localized supernova? Many who have examined the steps and the surrounding area have speculated that nuclear blasts may have been detonated within ancient Egypt, or even before. The ancient site in India, for example, 10 miles west of Jodhpur, with radiation that was so intense the area is still highly dangerous. An ancient layer of radioactive ash was discovered that covers a three square mile area. Scientists investigating the site where a housing development was being built established that there was a very high rate of illnesses in the area. The levels of radiation were so high the Indian government eventually cordoned off the entire area. They later unearthed an ancient city, which shows strong evidence of an atomic blast dating back some 12,000 years, which destroyed most of the buildings and killed an estimated half a million people. Did nuclear war occur in our distant past? Were these ancient structures which have stood the test of time actually built as bunkers? With melted steps and irradiated ancient cities found throughout the world, the evidence is certainly compelling. As always, thanks for watching guys, until next time, take care. Scotland is a country which holds many mysterious tales of ancient beings who were said to once dwell within the astonishingly beautiful highlands. From fairies to ancient sea monsters, many a legend is said to be found here, including the odd piece of compelling evidence to back up such claims. However, our next Scottish mystery of focus is abundant with evidence. In fact, the evidence left surrounding this mysterious ancient technology is actually the mystery itself. Over 200 years ago, archaeologists exploring the ancient ruins found to dot the rural countryside began to notice a remarkable characteristic of about 60 mysterious structures found dotting the Scottish Highlands. Made using rocks with no mortar, instead the rocks on the outer layer of these structures upon completion went through an as-yet unknown process of vitrification. The builders of these extreme ancient forts were somehow able to heat the stones to such a degree that the outer layer actually turned to glass, fixing the stones in place and making them virtually impenetrable to erosion, meaning that the true age of these miraculous structures may be far, far older than we are led to believe. Although, for the first 250 years of study, these forts were presumed to have been exclusive to Scotland, thanks to the results of the research, they have actually begun to turn up in other regions of the world, most specifically Western Europe. With such overwhelming evidence in the face of adversity, academia, it would seem, have reluctantly been resigned to agreement with the extremely controversial facts displayed within these ancient stone forts. Quote, no lime or cement has been found in any of these structures, all of them presenting the peculiarity of being more or less consolidated by the fusion of the rocks of which they are built. This fusion, which has been caused by the application of intense heat, is not equally complete in the various forts or even in the walls of the same fort. In some cases, the stones are only partially melted and calcined. In others, their adjoining edges are fused so that they are firmly cemented together. In many instances, 
pieces of rock are enveloped in a glassy enamel-like coating, which binds them into a uniform whole, and at times, though rarely, the entire length of the wall presents one solid mass of vitreous substance. It is not clear why or how the walls were subjected to vitrification." End quote. Although the explanation put forward after examining these facts could be seen as a desperate attempt to continue to deny the existence of a highly aware, highly capable, intercontinental ancient civilization which once flourished here on our planet. Who built these forts? What clearly advanced yet ancient heat technology did they use to turn the outer casing stones to glass? With the pace of such discoveries being revealed to the world increasing, it is only a matter of time before we find out. Guatemala, littered with ancient wonders, temples which pierce its dense canopy, all once declared as separate structures. Modern technology, however, has shown that these structures, mostly now submerged by dense undergrowth, was once one huge mega-metropolis, with Tikal in particular also once containing a plaque displaying a great deluge, with the site submerged in what is depicted as a cataclysm, with a volcanic eruption also in the background of said image. With mysterious megaliths still found littering the foliage, one site in particular, it would seem, evaded destruction, and the subsequent rainforest's creeping grip which has consumed much of this enormous ancient site. Known as Kirigua, it remains virtually untouched, yet the most intriguing thing regarding this site, apart from its superb preservation, are the enigmatic stone carvings not only found at the site but throughout the jungle itself. Statues and megaliths, presumably often depicting queens and kings in strange contraptions, seemingly familiar in form to modern vehicles or the interiors of an aircraft. Once claimed as mere signposts, the sheer abundance of these mystifying tributes, however, now makes this explanation unlikely. For even if merely artistically inspired, what do they depict? Why would an ancient civilization show such passion in casting these particular-looking technological devices into massive stones all over the Guatemala rainforest? With Kirigua thankfully so well preserved, we can explore a number of these baffling carved megaliths in detail. Were they trying to tell future generations something? Did they find something crashed within the forest, possibly documenting a find and proposed purposes upon these stones? Did they witness a form of craft take to the air and seemingly into the heavens? Could this have been the inspiration for why leaders of these tribes would want to be immortalized in carved, similar-appearing machines, in the hope of eternal life or indeed a craft capable of transporting them into the heavens? Vast questions still surround this ancient civilization's knowledge, one now known to have been over 10 million strong. Did this enormous, once incredibly powerful ancient civilization get visited by beings from another planet? Possibly found a crashed craft? One they attempted to depict a reverse engineering of? The fact that many depict what modern man would perceive as complex craft concepts, many find highly intriguing. We also find these massive stone megaliths, the efforts undoubtedly applied to create them, their source inspiration, and indeed the images they depict by a civilization we now know were undeniably advanced and extremely ancient, once lost for millennia and only now being rediscovered highly compelling. We have come to a point in the age of our civilization 
thanks to the efforts of countless individuals who, in the pursuit of truth, specifically the reality of a lost past, a lost civilization once possessing now lost technologies, has finally arrived on the main stage of debate. It has come to a point of critical mass. Either having been made aware of their existence, or indeed realizing or stumbling upon this hidden truth independently, regardless, we have uncovered an immense array of proof to not only confirm their existence, but a proof now all but overwhelming to argue with. The entire planet, literally littered with impossible remnants, left by what we believe was not only one, but part of an array of lost civilizations, several of which being past global superpowers. Yet I digress. The artifacts found throughout Giza, for example, demonstrate a seemingly impossible ability to move and carve stones with the tools mainstream academics would put in the builder's hands, making such creations impossible. There exists within the museum's archives themselves a smorgasbord of vases and stone cores, lay for all to see, each suggest that they were not only the result of some form of advanced lathe work, but other far superior and powerful tools far ahead of that of the copper chisel, which to claim was the culprit, we feel is now nothing more than an offense to one's intelligence, when the evidence to suggest otherwise is in front of one's face at the same time. We have previously covered the vases supposedly made using nothing but copper in the past, specifically the trilobe disc. Yet the many other members of the collection, known as the Saqqara vases, not only demonstrate a mastery of lathe work, but some are so impossibly delicate that when attempted to be explained with modern paradigm, one is left utterly baffled. What lost technologies or techniques were used in the creation of these vases? Article 99 from the Anorthosite Nice catalog, but one example of this extraordinary ability to either cut or possibly mold these stone vases. With wafer-thin edges and a shape formed with the lip, demonstrating they would be impossible to recreate even with the advanced technology of a lathe. Who made these seemingly impossible artifacts, along with the unmissable Great Pyramids, highly compelling? Modern technologies have enabled man to peek into the past like never before. Numerous discoveries have thus far been made, many of which, as we predicted, continue to reinforce our posit of past civilizations being once far older, greater in occurrence, and some in size and indeed technological prowess than currently academically stated, notably expanding recognized scales of many of these ancient cities. We believe these often remarkably ingeniously laid out settlements, now buried under millennia of strata, were sometimes either partly re-inhabited leaving later relics, or simply have surviving sections piercing the ground strata, foliage, and tree levels. Guatemala, a perfect example of this. Submerged beneath impenetrable forest, yet dotted with towers once argued as separate ruins, built in honor of various things, now realized thanks to LIDAR as one once enormous mega-metropolis. Furthermore, this ancient claimed Mayan site, amazingly, does not hold the title for possessing the largest single ancient structure possibly on Earth. Although buried under several meters of Earth, LIDAR has revealed the site as Eguadar Phoenix, a structure of astonishing proportions has been found, scanned, and measured. Discovered to be over 4,500 feet long and 50 feet in height, the platform of its roof alone would have taken a stunning expanse of space, and the research being undertaken to understand yet another mega-metropolis which surrounded the structure are finally forcing an overdue change in long-held, stubborn, ignorant, and to us, long-opposed paradigms regarding who, when, and indeed how ancient people accomplished such achievements. Researchers stated, quote, Aguada Phoenix is by far the most sprawling ruin, end quote. They continued, In fact, after three years of study, 
we have determined that it's by far the largest and very probably the oldest Maya structure ever found in Mexico. These quotes, however, raise some curious questions. Although the research thankfully transparent in nature, sharing the incredible discovery with the world, if indeed the oldest structure ever found, one has to remember it is also one of the most incredibly massive and clearly one of the most complex architecturally constructed structure as well. The question, how is this logical? We feel a contradictory statement, unless one perceives the past as our channel argues it once was. We will keep you posted on the discovery. We find it highly compelling.